Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for the um, Form, Texture, Light, Shadow exhibition virtual Q&A with the artists um, and the models. And um, this evening is presented by the Arts Council of Winston-Salem and Forsyth County. And I am uh, Shannon Stokes, and I am the Patriot Services and Events Manager with um, the Arts Council. And this evening we have in the room our artists of the exhibition, as well as the models. And so um, we're just gonna have a, a, a good conversation. This um, Q&A session is being recorded and will be made available um, at a later date on social media. Um, and um, as we go along, feel free to enter uh, any questions you may have in the chat and we'll try to follow those in as we go along. So, um, we're gonna go around and I'm gonna allow the artists and uh, the models to introduce themselves. Um, in the room this evening, we have uh, Jasmine Huff, is, who's a photographer, uh, Nanette Davis, who is the jewelry designer for the exhibition. Um, we have Emily Ortiz, Badalamente, I'm working on it. <laughs> I got it a little bit. Uh, she's one of the models in the exhibition, as well as Jerry Teach Egon. Um, and so I will allow them to uh, give a brief introduction and then we'll move into the Q&A. Jasmine? Hey, everybody near me? Hey, okay. Um, this is my second mic. Uh, so I'm Jasmine Huff, I'm the photographer. Um, for the exhibition. Um, I am a photographer and filmmaker with background in, I mean, most of y'all know me. I live, to live here forever, uh, Winston-Salem native. My uh, parents um, were local artists in the area, and I am a um, photographer and documentary filmmaker. I'm Nanette Davis. Thank you all for coming tonight and giving us your time. This is very exciting. I am a jewelry designer. Um, I uh, live here in Winston, but originated in Chicago. Got my degree from Kansas University, lived in Denver, and then ended up in Winston the last 13 years and love it here. Thank you for me uh, being a part of this tonight. Emily? I'm Emily uh, Ortiz Padalamenti, um, and I am uh, one of the models, although I would by, by no means uh, consider myself a model, <laughs> um, but I was uh, very honored to be a part of this show. I'm an art therapist, and I run the art and wellness program at Satu School for Visual Arts, um, so thanks for coming. <laughs> Hello everyone, my name is Jerry Tichegon. I am humbled to be here. I do not consider myself a model. I am just a happy person who uh, is a fun. <laughs> uh, I am a super fan of Jasmine and Nanette. Um, I just appreciate their artwork, their, the time that they put into it. We just wear it and we just pose there, but the hard work is just amazing to see what it has brought out to be. Um, we thank you so much for showing up and giving us your time and um let's have fun <laughs> yeah thank you so much for those introductions um so it seems like we're getting a little bit of a feedback uh so i'm gonna ask um everyone to mute until you it's your turn to speak and hopefully that can help with that uh so we're just gonna jump right in and um, we're gonna start with Nanette and uh, I'm gonna give you an opportunity to uh, tell us about how this project began. Yes, I have been a friend and co-worker of Nikita Wallace, who is the charge of Winston-Salem Fashion Week, which they're entering their uh, fifth year. And um, she and I, 
again, we're friends. And when she started doing Winston Salem Fashion Week, I was just so inspired by the people she was getting involved to get creative in the fashion industry. And I told her, you know, accessories are just as important as the clothing and it totally elevates someone's look and becomes cohesive. It's like interior design and architecture together. So I, um, I, I kept asking to be a part of it and if she ever got a designer that would be interested in a jewelry person creating customized uh, accessories for their line to get a hold of me and in 2018 she did she found a woman named Pooja Aurora who um, was designing from India who lives here part of the year in India part of the year and her and I met I only had um, eight weeks before the show to design 16 looks for her and I was able to collaborate and get some pieces made and it was a great success um, and that moved on to she was approached by a fashion house in New York in 2019 um, and while looking through her photographs a lot of which um, were taken with uh, with my collaboration they asked who the accessories designer was and she let her know and they asked me to be a part of the New York Fashion Week last year which was very exciting so when that came about I was producing quite a bit of jewelry and I thought to myself I was photographing just the pieces right just the pieces on velvets and shadow boxes and it wasn't giving me what I wanted from the amount of work going into it so I approached Jasmine after seeing some of her work and I just loved her eye told her kind of what my vision was I had a mood board type of thing made for her and I knew if uh, I could get her in there, she would do what she's done and you guys have seen. She's fabulous. So I needed models and two of my beautiful friends that have gorgeous skin and gorgeous artwork on their bodies and I said, would you consider modeling for me? And I got them on board and the rest is history. <laughs> So Nanette, you make jewelry uh, regularly. Um, but how was that different from, you know, making jewelry every day versus making jewelry for uh, New York Fashion Week? Yeah, it's very different um, producing work for uh, a particular garment. The difference is a lot of my creativity comes about because I teach at Sawtooth. And I'm able to demonstrate a lot of the things that I love to do with metal, the different metals I use, the different techniques. And so it pushes me to get more creative because I have a lot of repeat students. So it's really fun for me to push myself. But I do have a lot of repetitive work that I have to do in order to produce to sell at an affordable level. But when you're, when you're creating and designing and producing work like this body of work, that's specific to garments of another designer the key to it is you want the jewelry to be seen of course but it has to complement the artwork of the fashion of the piece of clothing you never want it to compete you want it to look almost symbiotic like it is made for that dress right so I have people come to me for custom pieces and that's what I look at how are you going to be wearing is it casual is it once in a while is it low cut in front low cut in back how are we doing this what type of earrings you know what kind of things um, so when I when I design for fashion or like I said a garment it's very different because it's specific to that to the embellishments or the simplicity of the garment and it goes a lot of that goes into my sketches and my designs and I really work through it a lot more using a, a photo and then drawing of the garment to produce the piece thank you Nanette mm -hmm. um, Jasmine can you speak to um, your role and uh, photographing the work and uh, what attracted you to this project? Um, I had been working at uh, Sawtooth School for Visual Art as a marketing assistant. And so my part of my job is to fund 
nice stalk people so you end up staring at everyone's social media over and over again and nan kept sharing these amazing like process images very geometric very interesting and i love watching how people um approach their mediums and how people approach their work um but i could not imagine what it was gonna be and some about that was exciting it's like huh i wonder what she's making i wonder what she's doing now um and then later when she approached me, it was like, oh, not only this thing that I, I loved and admired is now gonna go to New York, New York Fashion Week. She had been doing uh, this fashion work for a while. I also had a chance to interview her and kind of talk about her and you've, we're listening to her now. She has an amazing way of, of talking both as like an arts educator and as someone who's like excited about art more generally, you know, she, she kind of brings you in no matter what you know, which was very little at the time. Um, and so it was really exciting to kind of share that way. Um, and then I, I knew that I could have the fun of photographing Emily, who always avoids letting me photograph. <laughs> so it, is, it ended up just kind of working out to be kind of a fun thing. I was a little nervous because I was like, I know they're gonna be strong. Um, and trying to figure out like, how do I make it both elegant and simple? Um, so there was a combination of it being kind of like a fun challenge and it being, you know, I knew just enough to be excited by what the work was gonna look like. And so you began to, to touch on the fun experience of the, um, photography session so i'm going to give you all each an opportunity to kind of speak on that day and what it was like and um just uh your reflections hi jasmine oh no i just want to mention i also have some fun pictures of the day so i'm just yeah. gonna switch over here oh <laughs> before we before we go there i i do want to mention that um our curator of the exhibition is not with us this um this evening she's not feeling well but i do want to give her a shout out um because she definitely played an important role in uh getting the exhibition in its space and collaborating and that is um lindsey piper uh potter someone helped me with the last other part figuero <laughs> yeah. um lindsey piper potter she's also uh um a small business uh creative entrepreneur and um her business is called um Piper and Fig, and she does um, re use recycled material to make very beautiful jewelry. So if you get a chance, definitely um, send her a shout out and uh, follow her on social media and, and check out her work. So, uh, and she's letting us know right now that she she hopes everything's going well and she's <laughs> proud of us all. <laughs> well, I'll speak to that day. Um, it was crazy hectic, as it always was in Sawtooth pre-COVID. So um, it was a crazy day. I had to get a time where Jasmine was available, Jared Tish was available, Emily was available. You know how that is, trying to collect, get everyone where they're not nervous. And I was still creating jewelry, like, to the moment. And I was so excited. And it was fun for me because it was the first time when I was working so ferociously, I had um, – gone from being asked for New York Fashion Week from nine looks to 21 looks three weeks before the show. So I was up sometimes 24 hours a day producing, reworking, trying to see what I could use because we had a day, day show and a night show. I was trying to cross over seeing which pieces I could use and that kind of thing. So I was so hectic, as most of you out there as artists know, to the moment it was kind of a timeline for me. So when I laid out all my jewelry on tables in the room, it was really the first time I was seeing it as a body of work. And these guys were like all in there and everyone that are friends at Sawtooth were coming through the room like, oh wow, oh look at that, you know, and it was such an amazing experience for me to have friends and people appreciate and love my work because they had seen me in the studio weeks on end, day and night, working and producing, not only at Sawtooth, but at home. So it was, that's how the day started, was me getting everything together, lining it up, 
figuring out how the groupings went and which ones crossed over. And the girls walked in. I brought, told them, bring black, bring low cut, <laughs> bring anything you can. And that's what they were trying to do. That was their end. And Sweet Jess was like, okay, well, we're going to do this. We're going to figure it out. And I knew. I knew she was going to be able to do it, and she did beyond, like I said. But it was a fun atmosphere. We were giggling. And as elegant and beautiful as these photographs worked out, it's because these two girls who say they're not models were naturals. <laughs> they were naturals. So that's my fun of the day. It was so much fun. Yeah. Jasmine? Yeah, it's funny. I was telling a friend of mine, um, I was like, you know, I, I've shot enough weddings to be prepared for things just happening. <laughs> Like for for go oh no 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 nope. <laughs> but what was cool was despite everything Nan Nan Nan's remembering like hammering to the last minute for me it was like okay I know it's gonna look good how do I make this like be worth it you know like people are coming in after work how do I make it worth the time of them getting ready um, the if you're familiar with the sawtooth space there is a, uh, a like a my equipment closet in the photo studio so they're using the equipment closet as their makeup studio and like getting everything <laughs> ready and I'm just over here kind of like moving fabric around like nope hate this light hate this light like this light kind of maybe <laughs> too dark not quite and so I'm just spinning it, and no one can see me spinning but my head is just sort of spinning um but I will say that that I would agree with Nan like they were the models who are not <laughs> were so calm you know like when it when we actually started it was like i can just follow the energy you know what i mean without having to like get to focus on where things were and also i had not seen any of the jewelry either and so i just remember it was like christmas each time because everything was packaged and she just opened it up and another piece would just be opened <laughs> and so it was kind of like fun and exciting um there was never a dull moment because there was always a new piece or a new look or a new adjustment. Emily, would you like to share your experience? Sure. Um, so I was very nervous because I hate having my photo taken. So, <laughs> uh, but I love Nanette and uh, Jasmine. So I was like, okay, I'll do it. <laughs> um, but it was, you know, the nerves definitely went down once we got in the process because I think it was it was such a fun collaborative process like um I was doing Jared Tisha's makeup and Jared Tisha's helping fix my hair and you know we were all really a part of it and um and it was just a really great creative energy and then it really like the pieces um like Nan spoke to you know she usually makes these more everyday pieces but the pieces for fashion week were really this different sort of thing and it, it was like playing dress up and these like gorgeous pieces you know so you, you really got to like step into being someone else um being so uh, being being a model um, which uh and, and it was fun you know it was like being with your your best artist friends um playing dress up and, and taking photos but um i was just am amazed to being on the other side of it and then seeing the photos come out um and being in the show because i think it's uh it, it really captures the energy of the day like it but and also like jazz when they they came out just so elegant and like beautiful and i think there was a lot of giggling and laughing and it was so fun but then the product was just this like beautiful elegant photo so um it was it was like a really really great process and then seeing the product was was really stunning so i'm, I'm really proud of, of those two um it was, it was really a fun fun day um and the nerves went away pretty quickly after that <laughs> and Jaratish? You're on mute. <laughs> Forgive my technology, it's the pandemic. <laughs> um, um, I couldn't agree more. Um, it was, I used to work at Sartred School of uh, Visual Arts at the front desk. And one day just Nanette walked in and said, do you want to be my model? And I was like, ah, these are those things that people ask you and then it just goes on and on. 
But um, being with uh, Atsat with and I knew Nanette, uh, I knew she was serious. She's a very happy person. You will not know when she's mad or or angry. She's always happy. So <laughs> I was like, okay, I really can't tell whether she's uh, hoaxing this or. But it came and um, Emily was there, and I can tell you, um, I was telling Emily, I had I don't know how to put on makeup, and so she did my eyes, and I was asking, what do I do with my hair? Do do you want my hair up? Do you want it down? And it was just a very relaxed um, photo shoot. It was. Fun. And I think there was an event going on that day, I'm not sure, but there was a lot of people in and out and just the excitement of Ninette laughing and she's like, we got to do this. The energy from Jasmine just being there, you know, photographers always are like, no, you need to do this. What's wrong with you? You know, that stereotype that you hear photographers do to models. And I was like, oh my God, I don't know if this is one of it, but it turned out to be one of those ice cream vanilla kind of feelings <laughs> very beautiful and to just see the pieces and how they blend in the body I mean I'm not a gold person I'm a silver person but wow um my favorite pieces as I tell Nat were the waterfalls and every other pieces but just how they complement the the um the, the structure of the body how I would see this uh, necklace going to maybe I can wear this in the Oscars I can wear this in casual I can do this in charge I mean the jewelry you can wear everywhere. And then just seeing what Jasmine brought out from just a simple cutting, I, I was blown. I've never seen any kind of art like this. The lighting, it might look simple, but Jasmine had to do a little bit of, let's try this. It's just an inch move or, an, or a half an inch move just makes a big difference because lighting is most important to showcase this, um, the artwork for Nanette, uh, of Nanette. And, Walking with Emily, oh my goodness, she's just this very peaceful um, atmosphere. So I was, I was very honored and very humbled to be part of this. I did not know it was going to be this big. Um, I still don't consider myself as a model, but I consider myself as someone who enjoys and appreciates art. Thank you. Thank you everyone for sharing your uh, reflections. There are some uh, wonderful comments um, in the chat. and. Um, mainly talking about how stunning the photographs are and the, and the jewelry, uh, the fluidity between the jewelry and um, the photography, which almost, uh, it's, it's parallel to what you were speaking of earlier, Nanette, when you were talking about making jewelry for um, uh, fashion. And then uh, we, we have a question here um, from Blake, uh, who is asking, um, well, he says, Jasmine, first and foremost, uh, your photos are stunning throughout the pieces you you use for light you, you created some unique um, memorable images uh, using lighting uh, can you discuss how you play with light and its relation to the models and the jewelry hey blake <laughs> um i part of what i, I want to um add to that question something jerry teach said you know we're gonna keep pushing back on them saying they're not models over and over. Like me and Nan are gonna do that like all night. So just be prepared. Jerry Tish in particular is more of an actress model, right? So she takes and gets into a place. Like I remember there's a, a image, I'm just gonna, this moment, I was just like, hey, um, pretend you're floating on a balloon, uh, on a um, trampoline and she's just floating. And she just stayed, like she just stayed floating. And you can see like as she as she was to float, the light kind of hits her note just just a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Like there's um I would say that with lighting, lighting was about the mood of the person at the time and feed, fitting into the mood of the model in the moment. And so we would adjust, we basically had one corner and we would adjust between dark, you know, um, high contrast to soft, kind of a soft contrast, um, depending on the piece and making sure that each look got as broad of, um, maybe as broad of a story as we could, because part of it is um, Nan is photographing these for New York Fashion Week, but she's also a working artist. So it's making sure that there's each piece 
can have its own story and can be sold potentially, but also each look has its own story and can be told. Um, so there were a variety of factors, but I would say my first consideration was like, what headspace are the people in at the time? And um, which piece and we were we working with? Um, and so it was really, really fun because for the most part, we did have pretty consistent lighting, um, which never happens, especially indoors. Um, but what ended up happening is I was able to kind of work with the people who were so giving and so engaging and so willing to like take, go to the places I wanted to take them um, or take me along to a new mood or a new place. So that was, that was kind of a, a big part of it for me. I would like to interject that the lighting did come about. Um, we had a kind of a mood to start with. I kind of gave Jasmine an idea of what I was going for. And again, she took it to the next level. But like to answer your question, she really did work with the light, the natural light. But then <laughs> we were on standing on ladders with uh, aluminum foil. <laughs> and we were doing everything we could to get that lighting that she really could see through the lens and capture that not only gave the jewelry a voice but just the photograph that made it a piece of art and we did really struggle not struggle we really strove to continue to take as many photographs as it took for her to get the right lighting she felt it needed so uh, so like so with this back necklace image there are about 50 of this back necklace images some where you see all the back somewhere there's this hard line and I love this hard line because it creates this like uh, mystery suddenly um, the other thing is we were able to do it you know with with thinking with sunset and golden hour so that meant that the sun could do the work with us without us having to add lights and so on any other type of day in any other room to get the look Nan wanted, we would have had to add artificial light. Um, but I prefer natural light 100% of the time. Um, and it just feels uh, sultry. It feels mysterious. It feels kind of like there's something to imagine. Um, so all those things sort of played a role. Um, photography is this interesting art because you're thinking through in moment so some things are instincts and then half instinct half very 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 technical like down to the one fiftieth of a second <laughs> um, yeah. so there's so many new ways to approach the question thank you for sharing that and that that really ties into um some questions about um, people who have seen the exhibition in person. And um, Jessica Goodard, uh, she asked, um, were there any historical figures or fictional characters that served as inspiration? Yeah, I saw her comment and she also was asking about the mood board. So <laughs> the mood board came about, um, Jasmine, um, I'd seen some of her work and I was describing to her what I was kind of wanting and the mood I kind of wanted to set with the jewelry. Um, and so I just found some of her work and some other photographers work that I thought kind of gave the um, overall feeling of what I would like uh, the pictures to end up being. Um, my work is very is based, yes, on his, some historical, I wouldn't say characters. Um, I have several years of architectural training in college before I jumped over to jewelry design and <laughs> graphic arts. So I have a design background in architecture, graphic arts, and communications, and then I think that comes out in my work naturally the lines the geometry but also the natural forms um, I like to play with both I like to play with a little bit of proportion um, but um, I think that I have a lot of background studying in college Egyptian culture I don't really necessarily say that comes out but if you look at some of my pieces I think it does reflect some of that and I think that as we're exposed to different design and things that catch us in our lives and in our training, um, it, it reflects in our artwork 
unintentionally. But that's when you asked that question, I was like, hmm, well, I studied a lot of Greek mythology, a lot of Egyptian culture, and then architecture, and then basic design. So I think that that just comes out in my work. As far as the photography, Jasmine will have to speak to that. I don't, I don't feel like, um, like I have a, a, a minor in creative writing, um, but I don't feel like I, um, it's hard to say if it influences the background. I know what I feel when I see the jewelry. So like I see, a, you know, crown in me means royalty and I'm pulling from those royal moments, you know, um, the, the uh, back necklace, particularly the one with Jaratish feels a lot like armor to me. And so photographing it like I would photograph a piece of armor, um, same with this spiked piece here is also giving me kind of a, a war and a uh, protect, <laughs> protective shield kind of piece. And so there's something about, um, I can say that it probably influenced a bit of the, the poses ever so slightly because of what the iconography is for me and what the symbolism is for me. Um, but I am curious. I mean, I, I do see what Nan is saying just in how her wire work you know, you know, to, to build a crown that has this wire work in it that feels, um, the word we used before was earthy or more natural or naturalistic. Yeah. I, I do feel that the work um, elevated, was so elevated by um, getting these photographs because as you can see, if you guys at the show, and maybe you're noticing it more now because we're discussing it, but look at their faces. Look at the way they're holding their posture. Look at how Emily let go and went from right what's on the screen right now, this beautiful smile to this hand across the face, just total, look at me. Look at who I am, you know, and Jaratish with this, the beautiful gold pieces on, she just, she said she felt like a princess, a queen. She wore it to the opening night. She wore a crown and earrings and she walked around like she was 10 feet tall. <laughs> And she was so stunning. Everyone was walking up to her and asking her, oh, my goodness. Yeah, beautiful. Just beautiful. Thank you all so much for sharing and, and giving your um, your thoughts and, and uh, insights on some of the pieces. Because what you're describing, I, I didn't even think about, um, which is wonderful. Um, so we're going to move over into a section kind of talking about the exhibition itself and um, the layout. And we can start with um, Emily and Jaratish. Uh, I wanna get your, your uh, reflection on, on what it was like seeing yourself um, in photographs in the space of the uh, Arboreal Gallery. Jasmine, you wanna go ahead? Oh, are we starting with models or me? I can go. Oh, I'm sorry. Did you say models? Yeah, let's start with um, uh, Emily and Jaratish. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I can go first. Uh, so I, I work in the building and it was a little jarring, I will say, to see. Um, again, I, I don't like, um, I, I've never modeled before. So it was very like, oh my God, that's my face. Um, they're really big. But um, I... I think like once I got over the initial shock of it being me, um, the photos and the jewelry together is just so beautiful and just really, I, you know, I, after seeing it a few times, was able to step back and be like, okay, that's not me, that's character Emily in uh, fabulous jewelry or like warrior Emily with spiky earrings on. Um, <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, and I think that's why it felt a little not like me at first because, um, Jasmine has this great way of like making you be another character that I, I am not like I do not really consider uh, you know I'm always laughing in photos or smiling in photos so serious face is not um my strong suit so it didn't feel you know it it, it became like another person but the the exhibit I love like one of the things I love about it, it's got these beautiful vignettes of like um 
little like kind of stories that are told and a few different like the way that the photos are displayed with the pieces and there's just these like little beautiful sections of it um but then it works together as a whole it's like stepping into a really beautiful experience um but then when you explore it piece by piece um the pieces really come together uh, with the photos so beautifully and it was really um i think Nanette and uh and Jasmine choosing the photos and Lindsay and, and helping Curie did a really beautiful job of um, like pairing uh, Jartish and my photos in ways that they talk to each other really beautifully. And then um, with the vitrines in certain places, like just, just the, uh, it's, it's just a beautiful experience. Um, and it, it tells a lot of individual stories, I think. Jartish, you go. <laughs> I was unmuting myself. Um, so being away from Sawtooth for I think almost a month and coming back, uh, walking through the Arts Council building, um, the first thing I saw was how intelligently the photos were placed. It's, you walk in, it commands attention. Um, it's I, I cannot explain how that experience was. I, I, I was quiet for a minute and I cried a little bit at how um, beautiful the story. It was telling a story to me um, where you like, especially this picture where Emily is looking at me and I am like in a world, I, I have a way of imagining things. And she's like, hey, I am here. And I'm like, well, you want to join me in my little bubble world, you know, that kind of thing. And you see the pieces, she has a star. And it's, it's, it just made a very huge difference in my life. I have never been on an exhibition before. I remember talking to my best friend who's a photographer as well. And I told her, I'm never, I want to see your pictures up there. And well, I guess I beat her to it and I became the first person. And going uh, to this ex exhibition with my fiance who is not, has nothing to do with anything in this, he was, he appreciated the artwork and he really loved how the ceilings and the centerpieces were placed in the building in this in the space because he said everything from the ceiling to the walls to the piece centerpieces just complemented it's like they made sure arts council made sure that nothing was distracting this um exhibition and it is one of those things you just want to sit down in the middle um of the building and just um let everything just come to you and it, it, it was I, I was very, very humbled. I, I still am up to date. I am very, very humbled. <laughs> Thank you, Jared Teach and Emily for sharing. Um, Nan and, and uh, Jasmine, do you want to talk about how the title um, came to be for the exhibition? Either, either or is fine. Go ahead, Jasmine. Go ahead. Um, I can't remember which one of us picked said title or how, or if we just were like, "Yep, this makes sense." Um, but what I do remember is, you know, um, interviewing Nan and having her talk about all these different mediums that she has learned from and worked in, and just kind of being it, it came a. a through when we were working together that she was a collaborative force and not a obstructive force it was like no it wasn't this this and this it was how can I help I'm gonna hold this let's do this what what do you think and it was um so for me the title kind of shows our two mediums and kind of the blending of those mediums and what it has grown for me um even though we didn't consider it at the time was you know thinking about the artistry of modeling, thinking about uh, Lindsay's involvement as a curator and Shannon's involvement with the event and like it being this kind of um, focusing on, on, on these art terms gives us a chance to like show all the ways that the art comes together. Yeah. So there's some great comments and, and one that's sticking out is um, that the the images are are on a uh, wallpaper, and uh, in particular, bespoke wallpaper. Can you speak um, a little bit about that, Jasmine, and why you chose uh, this type of wallpaper for the images, or whoever 
chose the <laughs> chose the wallpaper. <laughs> um, so there are a couple reasons. One, um, so I had been uh, a close friend of ours who was also a, a Sawtooth employee. Uh, Jesse Taft had an art show with um, Carter G. Wood portraits of Carter G. Woodson girls um, who they um, in the exhibit. Um, middle school girls were photograph photographing each other and Jesse Teft and Diana Green, both local artists, um, use wallpaper in the piece. And what ends up happening with wallpaper is because it's not um, framed, it's not shiny. And and the shine in a in an art for me when it's shine, the reflection in glass takes you away from the moment for a bit. And the reflection, it kind of reminds you that it's art. You know, it's framed. There's, there's a border. There's a separation between you and it. But with the with this work, it was the first time I was like, oh, I feel right there. You know, and I liked that feeling of being right there. Um, it also provided me with the opportunity to have more pieces in the show because I wasn't also worried about framing. So I also was able to have, I wanted a show to kind of um, piggyback what Jared Tish was mentioning, I, uh, I wanted that feeling of it being kind of overwhelming a little bit, of it being like, this is to be looked at. You know, like I hope that if you walk into that door, even if you have to go somewhere else or upstairs or get coffee, your eye just kind of forces you back <laughs> just because of the quantity of the pieces, the size of the pieces um, and the color. Like I love the way the the it prints these dark images. Um, so it it works. There are very few moments as a photographer that you have a, a printing style that you like. <laughs> Normally you're like, nope, don't like this. This is the wrong black. This this paper is too shiny. This paper is too thin. But this was the this is it. <laughs> you know, I I don't I can't imagine it feeling right printed a different way. I agree. Um, when I unrolled them and saw them, I was just stunned at how textural they are. And some of the people are commenting and didn't even really think about it. They said the matte feeling and the feeling of the texture of you printing it this way complements the matte of my jewelry because I'm not a high polished girl. So it is. I was like, wow, you know, that's why it all blends so beautifully. I hadn't really thought about that, but that's absolutely true. I'm not a high polished person. I do a lot of texture, a lot of matte work, which I think I add a little bit of shine, a little bit of glimmer here and there, but mostly I complement and try to use different textures and different layers. And it's absolutely true that this work just absolutely, they go hand in hand because of the matte. I, I think they're stunning. They're very rich. Yeah. I, I, I want to add that um, I did, uh, Lindsay and Nan, I don't even know, um, managed to put this up in a day. <laughs> so they put the whole exhibit up in a day. They put this whole exhibit up in four hours? Yeah, about four hours. Yeah. About four hours. And there are 22 pieces. And I had, I had an idea. I was like, okay, I like these. There are a couple pieces that we'll talk about that I wanted a certain place. Um, but I said that kind of with the caveat of, y'all are going to do what you want. I trust y'all. <laughs> you know what's good. You know what looks good. And you so, had laid out. You um, had sketched it out, kind of. We just moved a few when we were, like, uh, when Emily was mentioning, we created the cases um where you see the pieces and then you see the piece behind it through the glass so that was yeah one of these which i love that we were able to do those cameos of those pieces because i think it's just a whole different vision of it i mean i i did have it sketched out but <laughs> but you guys really took and informed the space so it feels like the work is in is elevating the actual space and not like it's just there because you i think we've all seen i don't know uh if if it was tradition if it had just been one piece after another it would have looked fine but this feels built for the room you know and that's kind of what you you want to feel like 
especially now in COVID, if I'm going somewhere, I want to feel like <laughs> I'm supposed to be there. <laughs> yeah. So I am fortunate enough to work across this exhibition every day um, and see it. And uh, I want to touch on some of, the, you know, the background information about the exhibition, uh, kind of filling some spaces. I guess Lindsay will talk about she was here as curator. Um, and the, the entire process, has, you know, working with the artist has been um, the most wonderful process uh, and because uh, I do consider myself um, a creative also um, but just the correspondence and the organization of it all has has um, unfolded beautifully and um, originally this exhibition was supposed to take place in a different uh, gallery space on our campus in Haynes Friends Theater which is very a smaller space and so uh, when COVID came about um, Lindsay approached me about it being in the Arboreal Gallery and uh, we kind of touched base and then you know things happened and then um, we got back on track in the summer and it was just like non-stop emailing back and forth and uh, <laughs> I, I, I was very impressed with um, just the uh, engagement and the uh, attention to detail um, that Lindsay had in, in curating the space and uh, Nan um, and her feedback of how to place jewelry and um, yeah we were in there we, we put it up and uh, uh, adjusted the lights and um, uh, Jasmine you did amazing work at uh, <laughs> a really kind of big you know uh, remote project manager and then you came in I was like oh hey I'm happy you're here to see it <laughs> person so um, it really turned out beautifully and I do want to mention that um, the exhibition has been extended to um, October 15th so it didn't close on the, the 24th of September so if you haven't seen it it's still up in the Milton Road Center for the Arts and um, if you are interested in purchasing some of the pieces uh, they are available for sale and um, you can purchase them on site uh, yeah I'm going to go and move on to the next topic, which um, uh, it's about the themes and um, for the exhibition. And then uh, we'll get a few more questions. So if you have any questions, go ahead and put them in a the chat. And then uh, we'll try to wrap up from there. So uh, Jasmine, can you talk about um, like the images you chose, the specific images, and then those that are virtual. And then um, Nanette, you can touch on the collaboration process and uh, it being why you chose to do a joint exhibition. And then uh, what did you all gain working together in this collaborative effort on this project? Is that clear? <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> I'll let you take it away. Well, uh, well, thank you guys all for being here. This has been really fun. We've also learned a lot from these questions. Um, uh, it's really cool as an artist to kind of get feedback, which is one thing we lost because of COVID. Um, so um, I was really, it was one of the things I was really, um, so I think we were photographing for about like three hours or so it was lo it, we were like, like oh we'll just go in there and take some pictures of the pieces and then we never left I guess a piece of us is still there which means that there are about like 600 images about 80 that I like um and I had to pick those down to 20 <laughs> I had to pare those down to 20 uh, when we were going to do it at the uh, Haynes Brand Theater, that space is really small. And so we were really only going to have about six large pieces. And so once we had the opportunity to do it at the Arts Council, it was like, oh, more options. But now, oh, no, more <laughs> options. And so one of the things that drew me to it, the work and the reason why, um, if you go into the actual location, um, this image, uh, I wanted these two images of Jared Tish are on both sides of the wall. And I really, I told her, I was like, I really want this picture of Jared T. looking right at, right at the camera slash audience. And the reason was I just, 
it was when she looked I said look up just stay there and then when you look at me just stare right at me and it was like it was like my camera was on fire like I had to stop (laughs) for a minute I was like whoa and every time I look at it I I feel spoken to just through her eyes and I wanted the piece I wanted to choose images that were about women seeing and being seen because I um my background my intro to visual art and my intro into photography in particular has always had a a feminist lens and there's something about when uh typically historically in images women are to be looked at in, in classic art but when they do the looking there's something shifts a little bit your relationship as an audience member shifts your understanding of a camera shifts your understanding of who a photographer who the photographer is shifts and and I like that interplay. I also think in general, the, there's a comfort level when you're in an exhibit. You know, there's a, images are framed. They're behind glass. There's a separation. You look in, you do the looking. Maybe you do that like point thing where you go and you're like, ooh, art. And you feel very fancy. But, but when, they, when the, uh, when the um, uh, spectacle, when the, when, when the gaze is shifted, suddenly you're like, oh, who am I? (laughs) What am I doing here? (laughs) What is this person saying to me? And so I picked images that were focused on eyes. And so while lighting was a focus, it was like, where, where are the eyes? Are the eyes looking down? Are they looking away? Can I still feel them? And so that was sort of my focus. Um, Like even this one with the back necklace, I feel, I feel Emily's eye even though I can't see said I. <laughs> and so that was kind of a big like guiding principle for me. Do you all wanna uh, touch on why um, a joint exhibition and what it was like to work together collaboratively? Sure. I'll take this, this one and Jasmine, you can come in. Um, well, again, I, we kind of told the story of how it came about, and I was just so lucky to uh, have these three women in my life at the time, and still. Um, but uh, again, if you've seen the show, if you've seen the work, my work has walked runways, my work has been photographed, it's been in articles. This is just different. This is art. This is taking pieces of jewelry that were perf- that were created as a function or created as a specificity to a designer but they stand alone and then with Jasmine's photography each photograph even though there's a piece of jewelry in it the photography becomes art and collaborating with young with someone young and vivacious and just wanting to to just get out there in the world brings such energy to me and working with these girls just it just filled me and I think collaborating with different mediums photography and jewelry um, photography and anything really uh, is such an important voice and it's given my work as we said a voice it's given it a whole different meaning it's given it a whole different way of looking at it when they're in these boxes and in these bags sitting here in my studio or, you know, being brought and worn once on a runway or being purchased by someone that brings me great joy. But this is timeless. I can see this work forever now and I can see it as pieces of individual art rather than just a collection or just a piece of jewelry I once designed. It it just brought it to a different level and it's made it uh, that much more important for me to get the word out to artists like myself who create and just sell stuff and don't think about photographing them and creating their pieces of art into a work of art like another level of art i i don't i guess i don't know how to explain it might jasmine <laughs> Try to say what i'm saying please i just want to add though that that nan um even this was nan's idea i was just sitting here with a hard drive of images hoping for the best i was gonna maybe do you know submit them here and there i never i i didn't have the vision to 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 think out that way and uh, 
like Emily, like I'm not a model. I'm like, oh, it, they're they're good, but can they be here? Is there something kind of that was it was nice to hear, like, oh, this is strong, and this is strong enough to to be seen. Um, but I also like, you know, um, the the images end up feeling very elegant. Um, elegance is very is nice, <laughs> but I like the authenticity of going you think you can't be elegant oh well this story is here like you could, right. <laughs> you could be this person you could wear these earrings there's nothing stopping you from wearing these earrings and i like that you know um photography has a way of making people feel small actually because they go oh i can't look like that but suddenly you go oh no i can look like that i can we all can be stunning staring at a camera like we can all be you know there's something really egalitarian about having the physical thing next to the photograph yeah it the collaborative show it it's it's more than we both could have thought of a year ago we were we've been working on this for a year it's not like an overnight thing and her careful choice of the photographs and the pieces just i just wanted to put just enough in there again to complement and not um compete and i think that it worked beautifully i think that they are uh, they're just beautiful yeah and it works well and i loved it <laughs> should do it more often yes <laughs> So as we um, move to, to closing, um, I want to ask uh, you, Nan, and Jasmine, um, for those who uh, aspire to, to do what you're doing, whether making jewelry or a photography or putting on an exhibition, um, what, like, what, are you, what, is your, what is your recommendation of how they could get started or a path they could potentially take? Okay, uh, I think that getting a gallery show and having the confidence to do a gallery show takes some time. I think it also takes another person that's been there and can mentor you or a collaboration like this where you're doing it alongside some other artists. Maybe start by doing some small local shows or going into, we have so many galleries here in town that are so uh, supportive of new and upcoming artists and just wanting to give people a, a chance. It's a scary thing. You can create art all day, but showing it to someone else and getting an opinion, that's the catch, right? And do you care about that opinion? Some people don't, but most of us as humans want to say, I want to be liked. I want my work to be appreciated and liked and, and, and understood or at least you know, appreciated. So I think that by going alongside someone that's already been out there and done it is an excellent way to start. Find some more, um, some smaller galleries or some, some shows here in town to just build your confidence and uh, jump, just jump. <laughs> yeah, I, I want to add to the jump. <laughs> um, I, when I interviewed um nan before any of this started she was like you know i was like what would you say to someone doing something for new york fashion week and she was like just go like it's gonna be hard just keep going <laughs> and, and every step of this way i've been like is this good and someone's been like yes is this good is it yes it's like okay i don't know <laughs> and i think that like i don't know forward momentum creates new opportunities um and also the the stuff that isn't you don't get paid for it we all wish we could get paid for like the the research the designing the planning don't give up on that part because it comes out somewhere like i don't know like uh you know the the times i photograph for other people who are doing like t-shirt design like i see that that practice in this too where like the work got better because i did that practice you know and so um be kind to yourself and like keep keep leaping. Thank you. Um, does anyone have any final thoughts, Jaratish or Emily? Any last minute questions in the chat? I don't see any questions, but I see some some wonderful comments. Yes. 
I just want to thank everyone. Again, I said it on the chat, but this is the first time I've done anything like this, and it was absolutely wonderful. Your comments, your support mean the world to us. This is um, new ground for all of us, and in these crazy, weird times, it's wonderful to have you give us that time and that energy to be here. I thank everyone who's been a part of it and everyone who's been listening and chatting and everything else. This has been an amazing experience for me, so I just wanted to thank you. Thanks, Shannon, for being our MC. You've been great and incredible. Yeah, I want to add also, I guess to add to the last question, um, choose um, choose your collaborators wisely. Um, I feel like I've gotten really lucky, at, but I, you know, Shannon's a great person to work. Like, if you need a show, work with Shannon. <laughs> I, Shannon's been, Shannon has responded to all 12 of our email <laughs> threads she has um offered to be helpful but also she really believes in the artist as a as deserving of space you know like she's not like oh this is a gallery and we're gonna put things here she's willing to collaborate and be part of it and you know um a friend of mine, friend of all of ours Ellen Daniels said something like i as an artist I always wanted to get to the wall and it's like, so it's not, it's so much better with the right wall. <laughs> it's so much better with the right person. And so I think that is something to, um, to think about. And it's an extra skill to, to like really cultivate and, and fortunate to be able to work with friends. <laughs> Um, I wonder, first of all, I'm very overwhelmed. My Kenyan family is here, so I'm trying to shed, stop showing how I'm crying. <laughs> um, just to see the support from everyone. Um, this is one moment that I am, um, I'm a very vulnerable person when it comes to my looks. I've always fought with my color, my skin, and um, how dark I was and all that, just a journey. But to see myself up here, it changes my whole entire, um, um, me mental things of what I used to think, just to see people appreciate um, art, you know, the jewelry, um, the photography, and also appreciating the models, um, just respecting that um, collaboration of all three parties together to bring this thing um, to what it is right now. Uh, it's such a very, very special moment for me. And it just it keeps giving me confidence. It's given me a great confidence. I have no makeup other than the little things on the side. And it just makes me appreciate my skin and be, uh, and walk with a tall, you know, with a long chin and say, hey, I am beautiful. I can do anything. And I'm a happy person, you know. And there are people out there who actually feel like you represent their brands very well. And that's Nanette, you know. I'm representing Nanette's brand. I just don't look at it as modeling. It's representing a brand. Every character that I do, oh, you used to wear Nanette's brand, man. I mean, you're a good person, you're a bad person. To me, it is my lifestyle. Whatever I do, I do it with precision, with intelligence, with respect, with love, because I am not just representing my own self. It's someone else's work. So I have to appreciate what they did. So to all of you who came, my family, mom, my sisters, my cousin out there, we really thank you so, so much for uh, just taking your time to be in a Zoom meeting and just listen to... Um, the, the amazing work that we are seeing here. And I will tell you this, I've watched Nanette in the studio do jewelry. It's not easy. It is not easy. Um, she sits there with the music and she's just concentrating. And I, I, I just sit there and I, many times I've stood outside the door and look at what she does. Sometimes she doesn't realize I'm there, but she can see me, but she cannot see me. It just shows how intense this work is. It takes a lot your mind and your time and she's always then to from i think from sometimes six um nine a.m to the time i open uh seven or eight forty five to nine p.m you know that takes a lot and for jasmine to just you have no idea how photography is hard when we did this jasmine looks like oh it's happy it's pretty it's it's not easy there's some angles, there's some lighting, there's some positions, there's some, you know, your dress, just one hair of your dress is not working, put it down. And sometimes you have to take a toothpick and pull it down. I mean, it is ridiculously funny, but the things that have come out, I have really appreciated. It was 
one wonderful journey and i could do this over and over again to me it's never about the money i am not paid for this it's because i love doing this i love and enjoy working with people who enjoy their stuff if you enjoy yourself it will attract people who enjoy what you do and to make a happy world i love a happy world that's me thank you so much all for coming <laughs> I just, I, she's just great. I mean, first off, Jerry, teach everybody. <laughs> um, I, um, you know, it's so nice to, it, it, you know, it's unfortunate we can't just all just like hug each other, but I just, you know, I remember, you know, I've taught photography and filmmaking for a very long time and we're not taught to photograph dark skinned women in low light. Like it's just not something that is, is taught to do. And I remember going, I can't, I can't mess this up. You know, I want to do this right. And she's, so, I mean, she's just so stunning. He's like, how do I make sure to do her justice? Um, you know, when you, when you photograph someone, you're kind of, you have to, you are honoring the moment that they are alive in this moment. Like that's the weight of it, you know, and, and trying to make sure to match that weight. And so it's so nice to go, it happened. <laughs> she, I, I, I love hearing, um, hearing from you. Um, yeah, it's a lot. <laughs> We're all going to have a good cry and then we're going to, you know, watch Netflix. <laughs> Emily, do you want to say anything? Or are you? I want to follow Jared T. She was so wonderful. <laughs> um, but I'm just, I was really honored to be part of the whole thing. And um, especially uh, with three women that I admire so much. Um, Jared T. is an incredibly talented vocalist and a wonderful photographer, Jasmine, and Nanette is a um, jewelry maker. And it was just like a great collaborative, um, creative team. And um, yeah, I think, uh, you know, Jerry Teach said it all, <laughs> that it's just, it's, uh, I think it does change the way you look at yourself. Um, I, have, I have a cousin who models in New York and is six feet tall and, you know, and is like the stereotypical model. And I think for um, Jasmine and Nanette to choose us to represent the work was really, um, really an honor just and, and to, you know, um, see yourself on a wall in a position of, of uh, you know, art is, is really um, powerful. And so thank you guys for for putting us on the, the wall. It was really, it's, it's an honor to be a part of it. And thank you everyone for showing up. Um, yeah, we appreciate you guys. <laughs> so I, I do wanna um, remind everyone that the exhibition is still up through October 15th. So if you haven't seen it, please come by um, and see it um, at the Milton Road Center for the Arts. Uh, say hello to me, uh, I'll be there. <laughs> Um, if you are an artist, uh, I would love to talk with you and um, the Arts Council, uh, I feel like we're moving into a space where we want to be more supportive for the individual artists. And so, um, yeah, please reach out and uh, this, this project and this everything about it has just been so um, wonderful and um, working with such beautiful women and uh, it has been a very uh uplifting and restorative almost you know during this time where um we we can't connect or in a way that we would like to um but i hope you all are able to see the show and um experience it and spend some time with it because it, it, it is truly wonderful uh, thank you all so much for coming on and engaging with us uh this is the first time we've done anything like this. And so we're probably going to continue to do this as we go forward, depending on uh, what happens. So, but we love it. And this is a great way to start off the weekend. And I just hope you all uh, enjoy the rest of your weekend. Um, and feel free to reach out. Uh, I don't know how people, I guess we'll follow up with people via Eventbrite and social media. Um, yeah. All right. Have a good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for hopping on. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you all for having this. Thanks so much. Hi, Jessica. Thanks, you guys. Bye. Bye. <laughs> and shout out to Lindsay if she gets to see this. We love you. Yeah. You. yeah. <laughs> love you, Lindsay. Thanks. Love you, Lindsay. <laughs>
Thank you, Mona, Jessica, Blake, everybody out there. Thank you so much. <laughs> Outstanding. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thanks Bye. so much. Thank all right, you guys, I'm going to end the meeting for all. Okay. Thank you, Shannon. You're wonderful. <laughs> Goodbye.